Hi, everyone. I see people are joining bit by bit, so let's give them a couple of more minutes to connect to our webinar. Okay, good. I think people will still come bit by bit, but we can maybe already start uh, with an introduction about this webinar. So since you all registered, you are expecting and you know that it will be about Dashboard Builder, which is our new functionality that we've added to Pointer Pro. So the main goal for today's webinar is to give you more knowledge about this feature, but also show some real examples of demo dashboards that we have built um, and also show you, show you some things live because this is always a fun thing to do. So moving forward, our agenda will look like this. The first part, we will focus more on getting started. As I mentioned, there'll be some introduction. Um, also, where can you find the dashboard builder? And part will be also about data structure. So to understand how is it uh, presented and how you can use this data in order to analyze it and create dashboard on top of that. And the second part will be a bit more interactive uh, because we will look at some dashboard examples, as I mentioned, those were built by my lovely colleague, Chris, who is our um, product marketeer. We will look what are the available widgets you will have for your dashboard, some styling and presentation tips, and a little bit of extra for customers that use our distribution portal, how you can add those dashboards. Um, for your customers in your distribution portal. All right, moving forward. Dashboard Builder, what is that and how to get started with it? So Dashboard Builder is an extra functionality, an extra tool feature that we have now added to Pointer Pro that allows you to create your own um, reporting dashboards to analyze your response data and present it, present it in interactive and intuitive way and also allows you to unleash some insights and see some correlations from your response data. As such now, Pointer Pro gives you the full cycle where you can create your questionnaire, you can create your PDF report, you can distribute those assessments and reports via distribution portal if you prefer. But now you can also create dashboards to analyze your response data and share those dashboards internally or download them as PDF um, and have it for your reference. So that's all now right inside your Pointer Pro platform. Where to find it? Um, if you go into your Pointer Pro account, you will see that under distribution tab, so on the top right corner, uh, you will see the distribution tab. If you click on it, you will see contacts, email invitations, and also dashboard builder will be listed there as well. However, dashboard builder comes as an add-on functionality. Um, so if you would like to know a little bit uh, more, um, you can always reach out to my colleagues from sales, or you can also reach out to me and I'll put you in touch with the right people. Um, so you see an email here on the screen, sales at pointerpro.com, or you can reach out to me or to support. We'll all be happy to help you and put you in touch with the right people. But now, um, since it's an add-on, most probably for you, it will be still locked, but no worries. We will review the feature now. So you already have a great understanding of capabilities and how it can potentially look like inside your environment. Moving forward, um, very important part, not so interactive, um, but yet very fundamental part is the data structure and data sets, we call them. So when we present your response data, we didn't want to have it as a chaotic all fields uh, and share them with you. We wanted to present it to you in a very structured way. As such, you have easy understanding what is where and how to use it. So for each of your assessments, you will have five different data sets available. 
Some of them you might use a bit more often, some of them not much. That really all depends on how you structure your assessment. So the first data set will be called responses. And from this one, you can see all the data about each specific response um, on kind of generic level. So we treat this response, we called it um, a session. So it has a unique session ID. And here you can also see the total custom score um, from every question that your respondent filled in, or for example, how long did it take respondent to answer your questionnaire? So everything more generic that takes um, all your response on a top level, if we can say so. The rest of data sets should be very straightforward from its names. The first one is intro fields. So as you know, you have an intro screen on your Pointer Pro assessment where you can add multiple fields to collect some data from your respondents and can be some geographical data, their email addresses, their names. Um, so everything that you're collecting on your intro screen will be available um, as part of intro fields data set. Uh, moving forward, question answers. That I would imagine will be the da data set that you will be using the most because that's where the questions and answers are living and you will be willing most probably to analyze those. So we will also look into detail how you can use that data set. But basically there you will see all your questions, all your answer options, and how many times each specific answer option was selected. Now moving forward, we are also having here formula results, which is also quite straightforward. That will be going around formulas. If you're using any into your questionnaire to calculate some KPIs or numbers, that will be available under uh, formula results data set. And the last but not the least, we have outcomes. That's as well uh, for some customers, I know they use um, custom outcomes, meaning that they customize the final messaging that people see, the respondents see in their assessment based on certain criteria. Um, so similar as intro fields, your outcomes have now a specific data set where all the information about different outcomes that you have added to your questionnaire, um, everything lives in that specific data set. So if you have a bit more questions or you want to learn a bit more about each specific field, uh, from those data sets. We have very detailed, amazing help guide. So if you go to helpguidepointerpro.com um, and you look for dashboard builder data sets explains, you will find a very detailed article that goes about each specific data set that we just now discussed with you. But then also in that article, we're explaining each field um, in detail what that information is and how it can potentially be used. Yeah. So data structure is quite important, but however, it's not really visual. So it's not as fun as actually looking at your uh, dashboard. So let's move to the more fun part and more interactive. Um, so we will be now talking about analytics and preview a couple of dashboards and build one of the dashboards together with you live. So a couple of um, dashboards that I wanted to show you, and uh, one of them is organizational health dashboard. So let me just quickly share my screen and then we can view it live with you in Pointer Pro. So I'm gonna share my screen, just go entire screen share. Um, and you should be able now to see my dashboard. Um, if something is not working correctly, Chris, let me know. But uh, so far, I think everything should be working fine. So this is the dashboard that we have created based on the assessment that goes about organizational health. And we already pre-populated it with some widgets and uh, KPIs that we think will be interesting for people to know about this assessment. 
So we see that uh, our dashboard starts with a couple of filters that are filtering the rest of our dashboard and allows us to drill down to the certain amount of data. So for example, here we have a date filter where you can select which time frame you want to look at. And we also have team filter. Team um, is one of my intro fields in this assessment. So I've added an, it as a, to the filter here. So for example, if you want to look at the development results, we see that we only have two responses. However, if you look at the marketing team, we see that marketing team submitted four responses for this assessment. And beautifully, the rest of my dashboard filters based on the uh, things that I select. The idea is that um, you can add some interactivity with filters uh, to analyze your data. However, your charts are also in a way um, can be used as filters. So for example, here I have a bar chart that shows responses by team in terms of absolute numbers. So I have two for development, four for marketing, two for product and five for sales. So if I were to click something on this bar chart, you will see that my dashboard is updating as well. That's just a nice way to play with your data and um, show some very valuable results. So here, for example, uh, we see average custom score by team. So as I mentioned, team is a part of my intro field. Average custom score is a part of another data set. Um, so we are combining data and showing the, it in a categorized way. And here I have my custom score average, but also my average formula results. So for this assessment, I was calculating leadership score, collaboration score, and also strategy score. So it's very interesting for me or for my colleagues or for my management to see what's the average results we have for those formulas for our whole organization. So I added them here as separate KPIs as well. So it's easy uh, to see how we are scoring in different uh, categories for our organization and if it's healthy overall. Yeah. I wanted to mention that if you have any questions, you can leave them in the chat. Um, I will now continue with other dashboards and show you a couple of interesting things. However, once we are done with that part, I'll definitely come back to the chat and answer all of your, your questions. But if something comes to your mind already, uh, please do not hesitate to drop it there and I'll be happy to answer your questions. <clears throat> all right. So that was about organizational health assessment. We have also prepared another example for you, and that will be going about uh, cybersecurity risk assessment. So in this case, we are analyzing how secure your organization is. And again, there are several factors or group of factors that we want to have a look at. Um, some of them being technical safeguards, human factors and organizational policies. So we want to see if our organization is overall cyber secure or if we are having some gaps in which area specifically that we can be alerted and implement, for example, more policies and work on those gaps to make sure that we have no gaps. <laughs> so in this case, again, you see that this dashboard is tailor-made for another assessment as such it has different structure we added some different styling touch to it and it's everything um, you will be able to do yourself too so in our assessment for cybersecurity, we are also asking which region the organization comes from as such it's very logical to add this as an intro uh, field uh, filter. So in this case, we have a region and uh, we can click and only see results for Europe, for example. Um, we also show how many responses we received per region in absolute amount, but also in percentage. So we see that currently Southeast Asia and Europe are going uh, head to head, meaning that if we want to receive more responses to have a comprehensive analysis from other regions, we maybe need to do some follow-ups and make sure that those companies are filling in their questionnaires and as such that we can have a full team report um, to be presented to the management team. 
Um, now, if we're looking at these KPIs, for example, I added some um, color um, to it, meaning that the higher my um, average score goes, means that more risk I have in a certain area. And I, as a manager, want to be alerted and prevent anything bad happening just because some area of my business was not secure. So in this case, we see that the, our technical safeguards and our organization policies are more or less okay. They're showing up as yellow. However, human factor average score is now showing up as orange, meaning that we have a bit more risk into that area, knowing that, okay, now we need to focus and implement more policies in order to lower down this metric. So it gives you a quick representation of your whole um, status or based on your response data. And you can already make very informed decisions where you want to put your attention and where you would like, or where you would like your customers to put attention. Because if you're running this uh, cybersecurity risk assessment for another company, you can share this dashboard as PDF with them, for example, as well, to present them the results and uh, share with them PDF report built in Pointer Pro as the guidelines of what they can implement for each specific policy. So it can come as a very nice, uh, visual package that you can offer as um, part of your solution. Uh, all right, so those are a couple of uh, examples here. Maybe I'll quickly return to see if there are any questions. Um, okay. Okay, some people, uh, okay, not a sorry, but I cannot see the dashboard. Okay, Jonas, I see that other people were able to see it. Please let us know if you were able um, to see that too. Otherwise, people are very excited to see. Uh, Jason, can I have my own branding and uh, colors? Yes, I will show you now how you can implement it because we will now create one live dashboard together. So stay tuned. I'll definitely show you how you can do that. Uh, Leo, so uh, one dashboard per assessment. Currently, yes, one dashboard is connected for one assessment. We do have plans in the future allow you to analyze different assessments into one dashboard but the way it is currently implemented is indeed correlation one-to-one, -one, one assessment and one dashboard. Yeah. Uh, all right, let's go back to fun, interactive and very practical part of building our first dashboard. I'm gonna reshare with you my screen. So once you go um, under distribution tab, you will be able to select, uh, you click create dashboard and you will be able to select which assessment you would like to use to create your um, dashboard. So in this case, I prepared uh, a sorting hat um, assessment that was inspired by our internal presentation when developer and team was presenting this feature to the whole organization. So I really like that example and I thought it would be fun to use it as well here in our webinar. So you just need to look for the assessment that you want to use to create your first dashboard. In my case, it's called sorting hat. I type it here, I click search, there my as, uh, assessment shows up. I select it and I click create dashboard. It takes some time to load the results. Um, if you create the dashboard uh, for the first time, it may take a little bit of time to load all of your results. You see that in my case, I only have 26 responses, so it took a bit faster for me to load the data. If you have larger assessment that you have more responses into that, you might need to wait one, two minutes. It doesn't take too long, but you might refresh your page and then your numbers will show up automatically. Now you see that um, by default, we already added a couple of widgets uh, here as well. It's because we don't want you to start from a blank page. We already want to show you some insights as such you can continue populating your dashboard with more widgets. So here we are adding you a date filter. When was your first response? 
response, your last response, how many um, your responses you have in total, and what was the of average duration for people to complete your assessment. Going to the fun part, we will now enter the edit mode. It takes time to load, but you see that immediately the whole editor is loaded right inside your screen. And it is very similar to the editor that you have for your report builder, where in the center you have like your canvas that you will be adding everything onto. And on your right hand side, you have all your data sets uh, available. So as I mentioned here, responsive data set, it's something that we already use in the current dashboards. And then we have our former results, question answers, intro fields, responses, and outcomes. So um, in my assessment about sorting hats, I ask people's name on the intro screen. So perhaps what we can do is add this as a filter and allow us to filter on the name. So what I'm going to do is I'll go under add items. And here you will see all the different widgets that are available for you to add into your dashboard. They're starting from more generic one like text widgets, image, number. You can even add a video into your dashboard if you prefer. And then going down, we have a section with filters, with different styles of filters that you can add to your liking. Then a group with barred column charts, line charts, and pie donuts and then going more to complex visualizations. But most of the time we're seeing that customers are using um, bar column charts, pie charts, something that is a bit more familiar to them. So uh, now we want to add something uh, to filter based on the name. So I will use a simple drop-down filter. Um, if I just drag and drop it, you see that it appears into a uh, canvas. I can just move it around as you prefer. I can also resize it, make it longer, shorter. Um, it's very intuitive in this case. Once I added my new widget, it tells me, hey, you need to drag and drop data onto a slot, meaning that so far my widget is empty. I want to feed it some data. I know that I want to add uh, names of people that submitted responses and those names I collect as I mentioned as intro on the intro screen so I will open my intro fields data set just here I hover over and I click and here my data set opens with all the different fields that are available once again if you want to know about each specific field you can check our help guide article and there we explain every every one of them in detail uh, so you can learn about them uh, there. In my case, I will be using the answer option. So answer on intro field, that's what I am interested about. I'll just drag and drop it here on the dimension. And now if I click on the filter, I see that so many people already filled in my assessment. Um, including that one that you shall not name. I don't know who shared a link to my assessment with him, um, but he filled in this assessment as well. So here we will see everyone who filled it in based on their intro field. Now we also want to add some charts and see how people responded on different questions. So for example, let's add a chart, um, a bar chart to see what's the response distribution for question number one. So what I'm going to do is I'll go under add item and I'll just create a simple bar chart. So now it's again tells me, hey, Nata, your data is uh, your chart, your widget is empty. Add some data. Now we know that we want to add here the response for our question number one and all question answers are living in question answers data set. So we will just open this one. And the very first field that we see here is called answer. Now, if I add this to my chart, it will load to me automatically all the answers from all the questions. But that's not what I want to see. I only want to see question number one. So what we're gonna do is we add our answer onto category slot over here. So we just drag and drop it. 
Now you see that it's loaded every, every single thing, but it's not what we want. So we will hover over our chart here in the data slot. We click it. So now it opens for us the settings of this specific widget. And here we have a purple button that is called add filter. So here we will add a filter only to show the responses for question number one. I'll go here add filter, click add filter. And in our case, I will go into question order, which is question number one, two, three, four, five, how they're listed in your assessment. I'll go question order is in and I'll click one because we only want to visualize data for question number one. I click apply filters. And now only responses that were for question one loaded. So I can now also add a bit more visual effects to this chart. So for example, I don't want it to be called bar chart. I want it to be called question one, for example. You can also put your own question text here or anything that comes to your mind. For me, for this webinar, I'll just keep it very simple. I'll say question one. Now, um, all of my response options are available here. I can also go into settings of each specific widget. So if I click on the settings, all the different things will be now available for me to set up this bar chart, starting from title. If you want to have it or you want to remove it, then showing value in the bar now I don't show any value in my bars. However, maybe I want to show an absolute value. So now I know that for the first answer option, 10 people selected it and it's very easy for me to understand and comprehend any information that I added to this chart. We can add different colors to our bars. If that's something that you prefer, you can make the corners a bit more round if that's the style that you like. Um, and then you can also change the order and limits if you only want to limit two responses or you want to order them by measure starting from the lowest to the highest or vice versa. Those things are possible. So you can play around with settings here as well. So now um, we have two widgets that we added to our dashboards, one of them using intro fields, another one using question answers. Let's see how they uh, work together. So Ambos Dumbledore. If we click, we see um, that our top chart was uh, updated already automatically. Um, and if we want to add more charts uh, to interact with it, we can also totally do that. Um, that was question number one. If we want um, to do similar chart with other data sets, like for example, um, we have also outcomes to see what's the distribution between respondents, um, who ended up in Gryffindor, who ended up in Slytherin. Uh, we can also add it as um, a chart here um, as well. So what we're gonna do is let's use maybe a donut chart. We will add a title of our outcome in the category and I'll see the settings and we show the value absolute. So it looks like um, very interesting in this data, we have quite very <laughs> luckily um, equal amount of all the different responses. Um, if you need to add any filter only to show a specific outcome, that's something that you can perfectly do as well. So it will be the same way. You can go here, add outcome order and show is in, and we only want to show the outcome number one. Now I created this data set and I know that outcome number one is Gryffindor. So I'll click number one and I set apply filters and we see here only Gryffindor is being shown. Yeah. Um, then maybe to add a quest, answer the question um, about styling for your dashboard, by default, it is using the colors um, from the theme that we have created. So if we go to the settings of our dashboards and we go under the theme option, 
uh, it is called orange smoothie. So um, because orange is one of our brand colors for Pointer Pro. So we created everything around orange colors. However, if you click on this theme, there are also other um, available. If you want to do something very custom, perfect for your use case, you can also create a custom theme. And there you will be able to change every color from the palette uh, and align it with your own brand. So for example, if I want something a bit more pink, you see, I just drag and drop it, change it, and immediately my charts are using pink. If I want to remove certain colors, like uh, I don't want this, I want to have more pink, uh, I just quickly removed it from my palette and the rest of my dashboard was updated automatically. Yeah. Um, an interesting thing as well is, of course, sharing, because sharing is caring. When you're in the edit mode and you click this dashboard button, you have a possibility to export your dashboards. And there are several versions available. You can export it as PDF, for example, or as a PNG, maybe if you want to include it into your presentation. So we click, uh, in my case, it will be PDF, and I click Download Now. It is uh, generating and um, uh, it takes some time to have it downloaded, but then once it's ready generating it, you will see it open into your download button. So you can have it as a PDF available for you as well. And now I'm gonna stop sharing my screen again and come back to you to see if you have any questions. Okay. I'm glad to see that people are entertained with this demo. Uh, okay, great. And Jonas was able to see the dashboard as well. Um, how many widgets can I put in one dashboard? Okay, Jason, that's a very good question. Now, there are no limits to the number of uh, widgets that you can add to your dashboard, um, but please, be sane with it. So we do not recommend adding you too many widgets just because um, human brain can comprehend only as so much information. So it is always best to keep it to one or two scrolls. So not very long dashboard as such, it will be easier for people you share it with to understand the data that you present. Otherwise, if you have very, very long dashboards, until the moment you scroll till the bottom, you already forgot which filter you added to it and you need to scroll up back. But there is no uh, restriction on how many um, widgets you can add to your dashboard. Uh, thank you for the compliments. Um, yes. So yeah, uh, well, I mentioned that you start with a couple of widgets that are available uh, already there. However, if those widgets that we pre-created for you are not needed, you can also remove those widgets and start fully from scratch. So Leo, if that's what you meant, you create the dashboard, you have those six widgets that we created for you, you don't like them, you just delete them and you add a new whatever you want to see there. Um, how is the dashboard builder different from the results dashboard? Um, so for the results dashboard, it's a bit more pre-calculated and static, meaning that yes, you can still add different widgets there, um, but the way you present the data is very static and limited to the number of charts and widgets that you can use. However, this goes as more advanced option where you have full control to prepare the dashboard from the beginning till the bottom, share it with your team. Uh, it has bigger library of widgets. As you saw um, during the demo, it was more than 40, 50 different widgets that you can add in the dashboard builder. However, in uh, results dashboards, it's only a few. The main idea that we will be slowly fading away uh, from the results dashboard, but of course we don't want to immediately take it away from you, um, but we want to give you a possibility to create something more sophisticated with the dashboard builder as well. Can you add text widgets to include explanations? Yes, definitely. It's part of the 
basic or general widgets that are available there. You can add a text on the side of the chart telling them, hey, in this chart, you can find information of this and this, and then explain it uh, to the people that will be viewing your dashboard what they will be seeing in this chart. Miran, thank, this is such a great improvement. Thank you so much. Um, will any of these updates be on a regular plan or are they uh, all an additional add-on to the plan? This uh, dashboard builder comes as an add-on to the plan. So you can reach out to me or to your account manager to learn how you can add this to your plan. Okay, Zane, thanks for the demo. I have another meeting. Good luck with your meeting, Zane. Um, happy that you joined. I see Miran is typing. Um, I've said everything that I wanted to share with you guys. Uh, you will also receive the recording of this webinar afterwards if you want to rewatch it. Uh, maybe quickly just run through the slides. We viewed this cybersecurity dashboard. We checked the widgets that are available. We saw the live demo. Um, how to share your exports, perhaps a little extra for customers that are using our distribution portal. You can also include those dashboards uh, for your customers in the customer zone. So that will be available the same way you share with them. It's a bit blurry uh, picture for some reason, but it will be available also the same way you share with them um, access to assessments, the reports, and then if you have dashboard builder, that will be just extra um, availability where you can set up which dashboard they will have access to, and it will show up in their customer zone, um, customer portal as well, and they will be able to look at this dashboard and only see their own data and responses from their own um, invitees uh, in that dashboard. Yes. The idea, of course, that you create something, you can share it with customers and create more traction for your products. Uh, all right. So far, I see I answered all the questions. If anything else come to your mind, please come talk to me. Um, here you see my email address. You can also just reach out to support at pointerpro.com and they will be able to put you in touch with me as well. Um, otherwise, thank you so much for joining me today. It was a great pleasure to show this feature to you. Uh, if you have any ideas or anything that you would like to share, please do come talk to us. We're always open to feedback. And this is our main goal is to make sure that this platform is very user friendly um, and useful for you. So please come talk to us. It is always, always Welcome. Okay, enjoy the rest of your day and see you soon.